Award in a Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is presented to architect Shankar N. Kanadi from Sankli. He was very cool, smiling. You know what he said? I must have done something good. And somebody has recognized, I'm so happy to get this award. Out of the world actually, I mean, uh, to receive JK Cement Award of the year is uh, always a uh, uh, always a pleasure and it, it literally boosts us you know to do something uh, good in future as well. I'm ecstatic and uh, it's quite unbelievable because this is one of uh, very early projects from our practice and to win uh, the architect of the year is, uh, is a very very special occasion I mean it's, it's amazing. Oh I feel not great because it's Always great to win something uh, after hard work. It feels great actually because um, this is an award, it's a very old and established uh, Indian architecture award. It's been in its 33rd year and a lot of the architects and the masters we've respected uh, starting our careers have won this award. So it's, it's a great feeling to be amongst the winners. Of, of the JK Awards. So we feel very honoured to be a part of this prestigious award. Always happy to win awards, you know, and I think it's great when we get it from peers in the industry itself. You know, I think it's driven by people who are in the industry, who are architects, so it's definitely a pleasure to win this award. It's very exciting. Uh, JK Awards are one of the awards which we really look forward to and it's very exciting that we have won the award for the project. Uh, I'm very happy to won this prestigious award today because uh, JK is one of the very important awards of the country and so we're feeling very very happy about that we have got this award. It's a pleasure of moment. We, the team has taken a lot of efforts for this project and I think we deserve this. This platform gives you to do always a good work more and more and you learn from this and uh, you meet people and who are like your mentors during college time and then you feel always good like and in, it encourages us to do more and more good work in that way. So when you have the client brief and when you have the context with you, so if, if, when you go with these two aspects you know, together, definitely something new will come. Because that is a, a, a very, uh, uh, what I can say is, uh, is made for the particular place then. Design has to, be such, uh, has to be designed as per the place and not as per the, you know, kind of a dreams, you know. So uh, it is very important how you design into that particular place because building is has to be rooted into that place. So this one is a is a uh, in Thane uh, in Bombay our project, and uh, therefore every whatever we did had to be practical. It's for one of India's largest developers. Uh, so we just use practicality as something that became really beautiful. For example, we've got swimming pools on top of other spaces, so the pools themselves become. Uh, ways of shielding the lower spaces and, and decreasing the air conditioning loads. Or for example, we've got this beautiful metal screen that not only keeps the sun and the rain out, but also uh, looks beautiful, edgy and looks like a lantern in the night, uh, which we call the project as a lantern in the park. We are architects. We are partly, we are not uh, like fine art artists. We are like a applied artists. So we always have to look balance this both sides. Uh, on one hand we have the practicality of things and on the other hand it's the spirituality or the quali qualitative side of it. So we, it, it's been, uh, it's what we do every day so it, it becomes your habit uh, eventually and that's what you look for in every project. Well we used a lot of innovation in this project. Um, the one of the primary concerns was that this was a house in Ahmedabad with um, temperatures soaring to about 44 degrees. So while we were 
trying to achieve to keep the uh, the temperature of the building cooler inside we also use the device to enhance the aesthetics of the building as well so we played with this whole system of pergolas which shade the building and at the same time create this beautiful dynamic shadows and use sun as the medium of art it's a sort of a translation of the traditional veranda you know so a veranda used to be a kind of a space between the inside and the outside it's a sort of a transitional space you know and here but this is a very different context it's a multi story building but we try to introduce this idea of the veranda as a sort of a liminal in between kind of space on which happens on different levels so it at one level it is just a protection for climate so i like the traditional veranda would protect against rain and the heat for the interior spaces so the plan keeps changing at each level you know and it also allows for flexibility in the future so people can there's no sort of grid of beams on the soffit so you can change the partitions as the, maybe the in the change of the build, you know the future use of the building changes to create a museum where museum is not something which indian uh, in india we sort of look forward to go to so the focus was on creating a public space which encourages people to come to but at the same time creating very simple uh, architecture which generally blends with the surrounding and robust architecture which uh, uh, is less maintenance over a period of time so that's the, that was the main focus the ideas that i am putting into a design is uh, is majorly uh, looking at the what the contextual response is there what is the client's need and then we try to see that what maximum we can able to give to the client and that is our first agenda to work for that so uh, it's a nice thing about bangalore like we practice in bangalore and about that is like you know it's a it's a nice city to encourage you and there are nice uh, there's a platform already created by very uh, by very nice practitioners like very young practitioners and then there are senior practitioners also uh, so you have already a background and you should like see what they have done and what now people are doing and what current scenario is about and the space and flex flexibility what we are talking about in our project what we learned also uh, and what we did here and i think we started with very tight houses like you know like 20 by 40 and what uh, bangalore is like many of the south indian cities that like, divided into these layouts like 20 by 40 is the least uh, plot size what we did and then there's a 30 50 60 40 so how to tackle these uh, uh, smaller footprint but still you get in light ventilation and this what five elements of nature we always talk about in our all our projects like five senses like you know, there's a light a wind and then there's a touch smell and there's a feeling about it and overall it's like a experience of a project rather than how it looks so it is more about a feeling than looking so i think we are more interested in that that how uh, that experience makes you aware of certain things that you are staying close with nature uh and i think future is all about that our biggest learnings were that uh, everything is about teamwork and persuasiveness uh, architects tend to work in cocoons and uh, because here the project is large we had to work with multiple teams across cities uh, and a lot of times uh, things don't align with our architectural intent and that is where we have to sort of persevere with the idea and persuade people to sort of see things from your point of view and i think these are the two things that really uh, we learned and we now appreciate and and hold hold very dear Uh, there were a lot of learnings uh, especially uh, the site was challenging it was a lot of terrain uh, a lot of uh, rocky areas and to work with that uh, working with the building uh, making sure that we don't uh, lose the uh, the idea 
uh, and being able to push through whatever hurdles we, which we got uh, throughout the project. Uh, uh, through the budgetary uh, requirements or through the, the, the contractors or through the materiality, we are able to make sure and we continue our focus. The key learning for me is uh, that on one hand it is a very small site, how to capture and use it best and how I can mat help materialize dreams of people. Our key learnings were uh, working on spaces with uh, light and silence. So I think we'll uh, continue with producing more of such works. Learning is a process, you know, and it evolves gradually. So you cannot just say key learning, it's a process which will continue. It's like, you know, looking for perfection and you know that you cannot get the perfection, but the beauty of Reaching towards the perfection is a process. The process is a wonderful thing one should go through. That's the beauty of architecture. The key learnings from this project, the house 20 by 22, is that how can you design a project uh, into a very, very compact spaces, but yet can make a more free and open spaces. How can you give more to your client? And that is what something that we uh, really uh, was the key, key learning after this project. I think one of the learnings is that the function or the form of the building actually came about from the concerns, the pragmatic concerns that we have and that was primarily uh, climate. It also led us to understand the vernacular architecture better and adapted a lot of vernacular uh, practices in this building as well to kind of you know, sh uh, make it more efficient in terms of uh, the internal uh, temperatures, etc. A lot of learnings, you know, uh, the usability of the building is which some, some of the spaces which we haven't thought it, uh, we haven't thought while we're designing the building, but you know, client is using according to that. I'll give you an example, there is an amphitheater at the back, you know. So, uh, client sent us a photo with a lot of, you know, like uh, women sitting there and they have a, a cultural program happening there. So. It feels really good, you know, uh, there, is, uh, there is nothing uh, uh, happier moment than this when, you know, you, what you design and uh, it, it is being used according to that. And sometimes it goes beyond that, you know, that is the real, real learning for us. And what we learned is like you should collaborate, how to collaborate as a, as a team and as an unskilled labor, how that unskilled work you should actually uh, make it as beautiful as what like straight line and there's one uh, line drawn by hand like you know, there's a difference so we learned many things with this Um, on a professional level, I think it has given us tremendous confidence. Uh, uh, JK uh, Architect of the Year Award, as we know, is a, is a very serious award. And uh, it sort of uh, reinforces or just tells us that we are on the right path. Getting this award for this category means that uh, we have uh, been able to achieve the right aspects for the public architecture as well as making sure that the architecture and the styles and the, the strategies we have adopted are in the correct path. This award is very important uh, for every creative person because more than anything he wants his peers and others to recognize it and give it give a pat on his back so uh, it, it will uh, inspire me a lot uh, and uh, that's the best thing that I can have from it. Yeah, so this award uh, will be ma as a threshold for our journey, next journeys and I think uh, professionally we are trying to contribute to society so that's a tube house which are, we have designed and a series of it will come in next practice. The impact of this award is very uh, uh, is deep because uh, this is one of the biggest award of the country and people recognize because of this award they recognize your work. Award has 
given us a sense of honor that we are amongst some of the most um, looked upon architects that we were growing up with and um, it has re-energized us. It is really important for us how we can take it from uh, from this to the next level uh, because it is our responsibility now you know uh, to do good work and uh, reach reach to the society as much as we can and uh, how architecture can be uh, can be reached uh, to the to the people and how architecture can help to the people that uh, that is really important and this award you know really boost us to do uh, all this stuff i think uh, it will impact in a very positive way where uh, you take some learnings and we saw many entries and you know many uh, we interacted with many architects, fellow architects here who has won this award. I think we will take a very positive things from here. My advice to young architects is that um, architecture as a profession has a very steep learning curve after you graduate. And if you don't go through that learning curve, you sort of tend to falter later in your profession. So therefore you must spend at least four to five years working with somebody you admire. A lot of interesting kind of projects which are happening with uh, museums, with housing, with uh, hospitality. I think it's very important that you choose a particular aspect which you want to focus on which is close to your heart. My advice to the aspiring architects will be that you have to work for the uh, betterment of the humankind. Work for people, work, understand their requirements and try to give the maximum and multifunctional spaces. I think the only advice I would give young architects is they should look at sustainable practices. They should look at how the world can kind of be a better place with our architecture. I think it's important uh, for young people to be able to not necessarily to push the boundaries as they see it, you know, you know because that's how you find your own space. Uh, yeah, keep looking things and you know, don't settle up. Don't set, because you know design you know every day you can you know improve it design has no boundaries at all so keep working on it you know don't settle with small small things you know uh, whatever the project size is whatever the uh, scale of the project is but you know we have to do it better every day you know we could see many like college students just coming out and starting their own practice nothing harm doing that but I think if you if you just uh, work and learn with a master and for some time. I think then that scenario of looking at a field will be very different. I think. Keep enjoying doing it. Don't look for results. Just enjoy the process and that's it. Uh, the result will come as a byproduct.